Stress is accused of causing a lot of GI problems, and let's talk about how it impacts your gut. Stress has often been associated with stomach ulcers, but does stress actually cause ulcers? Well, it depends on what you mean by stress. Physiologic stress, like that from severe burns, a head trauma, or severe illness like septic shock in the ICU, these do cause types of ulcers called Cushing's ulcers or curling ulcers. But the stress of a big work deadline or the heartache of a breakup, these actually do not cause ulcers. Now, come on now, this is common sense, right? People who are more stressed get more ulcers. That may be an association, but not cause and effect. So what could be the cause and effect? A person who smokes that's under pressure of a big work deadline is going to start chain smoking. And who's got time to brush your teeth? Or clear can substitute for mouthwash. And when we're stressed, we have more of a tendency to have headaches and be more sensitive to pain in general. And we're going to be more likely to take NSAIDs. It's these bad decisions of overuse of alcohol, tobacco, and NSAIDs that are really going to cause a peptic ulcer. So build healthy habits that help you to expel stress. And I think that you'll find stress itself does not cause an ulcer. But still, it doesn't stress cause GI symptoms. Yes, it seems that it may. It's been repeatedly shown in studies that there is a link between depression and anxiety in a group of conditions called functional GI diseases. Functional disease is defined by characteristic symptoms of an organ, but when we explore that organ, we find that it actually looks quite healthy. Take the condition of functional dyspepsia. Dyspepsia is basically a fancy way of saying that you're having some kind of symptom of indigestion. After you eat, you get pain, bloating, or you feel full really quickly. But when we do an endoscopy and we look in your stomach, we find that it's essentially perfectly healthy. Hearing that the place that hurts actually looks fine can sometimes be the last thing that a patient wants to hear. Just as they thought they were going to receive some clarity, they're again left without a diagnosis. It can seem as if the medical system doesn't believe you, and that itself can be enough to drive you mad. The diagnosis of a functional disease and its association with stress can seem like a suggestion that it's all just in your head, and that has a negative connotation. But consider this, all symptoms are in our head as we perceive our reality first in our mind. And so of course it's up here, but the question is, is it also down there? And that's what we have to explore. And if we find that it's not, it may be that our technology doesn't yet see what you feel and that your mind is telling you is there. But ultimately what matters is, can we control that symptom? And if we can improve it with a medication that is traditionally used to relieve stress, then that's a good thing. We don't prescribe a medication without respecting the symptom that a person is having. And as we've thought of these symptoms as reflecting a relationship between the brain and the gut, we found success addressing problems of depression and anxiety, using medications traditionally used for those conditions, repurposing them for these functional GI diseases. Now to look at another head game, there's the difference between association and cause and effect. And how can we take scientific evidence and move from just a weak association and actually start to have confidence that there is a real cause and effect? We do want to see consistent, tight associations across multiple studies, and that has definitely emerged. There also needs to be this concept of biological plausibility, that the idea makes sense. And here it's understood that there are many nerves in your GI tract as there are in your spinal cord. This is a very nerve-rich area, and things like serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine matter in the GI tract. And they also matter in how we perceive the pain of the GI tract. Cause and effect is also solidified as we see what these conditions don't respond to. They don't seem to respond very well to just suppressing acid. That would fit more with an organic disease where there's inflammation in the stomach that calms once acid stops. In this case, the functional diseases don't respond well to those, but do respond well with a medication like duloxetine that affects the nerve pathways. Ultimately, we need to gain a lot more understanding of the connection between the brain and the gut to really appreciate the cause and effect of these functional GI diseases. But I hope that this helps you to begin to understand their association. Thank you for watching and be safe.